distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sapko Miranamaska, and uh, I would like to thank, uh, begin with thanking uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan for inviting me to uh, this uh, panel discussion today. It's a great pleasure to be amongst uh, such eminent uh, specialists in the field. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, both uh, in India and in the Netherlands, the life science and health sector is of uh, imminent uh, importance. In India, the sector is witnessing a tremendous growth with increasing revenues and advancement in technology. Companies are increasingly shifting their focus on innovation. So there is uh, technology and there are revenues and they are investing in our companies here in India in uh, innovation. Apart from the big players that form the basis on the, of the industry, the startup culture is changing the dynamics in this industry in an interesting way. I remember that when I visited uh, Pune, uh, Philips has a research and development uh, um, uh, department there, and they do scanning, research and development on scanning uh, machines. And when I asked them, you know, why are you doing this here? Because you also have a center in Bangalore. They said, you know, most of the software that we use in the scanners is developed by startups uh, because we have students here that, uh, that the, the university delivers students here that uh, are able to develop this kind of software. Uh, so you can see already the role of startups for big industry. On top of all these factors, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, India has two other uh, advantages, low cost innovation and finding smart <laughs> solutions. Not, uh, not exactly Jugat, but find uh, out of the box uh, solutions and uh, what I said, low cost innovation. These are very strong, uh, uh, these are the strengths, uh, two key strengths of India in this field, in this sector. Now about the Netherlands, life science and, uh, and health sector in the Netherlands, we also have uh, an other landscape, but also a unique uh, landscape. We have a relatively high quality of healthcare accessible to all citizens. It's a, it's a private system, everybody is insured through companies. Uh, the government helps the poor in paying the premiums, but generally it's uh, accessible to all uh, citizens. We have eight university hospitals combining patient care, research and medical education in those eight university hospitals. And surrounding those university hospitals, we have business flourishing. So there is a very strong interaction between what the hospitals are doing uh, in care and in uh, research, and the companies uh, literally on, uh, on their uh, doorstep. We have a considerable amount of um, companies such as Philips, that you all know, Unilever, uh, Hindustan Lever, and DSM, uh, big uh, companies with a global approach and reach. And we apply in the Netherlands, the government since years, what we call the Golden Triangle Principle, that is that a government and the knowledge sector, eh, research and universities, and the private sector together try to find new solutions, innovate, and then it's always good to have companies aboard because you can innovate, but you also have to get a commercial viable implementation of those uh, innovations. And then um, two other things, and that's why we are so much engaged uh, with India in the life science and health sector. Um, the sector in the Netherlands is flexible to uh, approach to new markets. They're very open to new markets. You know, uh, my country is a small country. We have 17 million inhabitants, one seven. So our population is smaller than Delhi, but we are very open. Uh, and for example, our economy is the 16th in the world and uh, in, in uh, let's say in agriculture, we're very strong. So uh, we have to be open in order to count uh, in, in this world. So we have an approach also in the life science and health sector to new markets. Then uh, our sector is also innovative to, ch to changing needs of patients and healthcare professionals. And we are aware of the necessity to join forces for smart solutions for sustainable healthcare. And there, of course, that is the reason, one of the reasons that we are so much engaged uh, with India. The challenge we face in the Netherlands to innovate for affordable healthcare is a challenge we share with India. We have an aging population, but you will have another 300 million new Indians uh, up to approximately the year 2028, when India will pass China 
in population. It will be the biggest country in the world in population. By 2028, I think it will grow to 1.52 uh, billion. Therefore, we have found a natural partner in DBT. There are very uh, strong ties with DBT in a number of areas. There are three uh, main areas. One is vaccines, very active, medical devices, and the third is neurosciences. And this year, um, we will see a strong increase in the joint collaborations we have uh, with India. Our activities in India are in line with the governments of India National Biotechnology Development Strategy 2015, and of course with the grants, I call it the grant schemes of the new government of Mr. Modi, Make in India, Swatch Bharat, and uh, Skill India. Now I come to the companies. Philips, which is one of the largest dust companies present in India, is bringing its made in India medical devices to the market, not only in India, but also supplies them to, global market, to the global market through its uh, innovation centers in Pune and Bangalore. The company is committed to indigenous uh, production of its products and helps to reduce dependency on imports. Uh, Philips, for example, in uh, Bangalore, they have now uh, a research and development uh, section or unit of 1,500 to 2,000 uh, researchers. And uh, during the visit of our prime minister to India in June, they announced that they will go to 5,000. So uh, I've been there. And uh, well, for example, if you talk about uh, developing devices, uh, um, uh, ultrasound devices, they have made now ultrasound developed with Indian and Dutch engineers in Bangalore, ultrasound devices that uh, bring down the cost enormously and that also make it uh, possible uh, f uh, in, in a simple way to do an ultrasound and send uh, the picture or the, the image or whatever to a doctor uh, uh, far away. So also remote uh, areas for remote areas, for healthcare remote areas, very important. DSM is a Dutch uh, pharmaceutical uh, company. They're very active in India. They opened four units in the time that I'm in India, three years, they opened four units. One of them is, a, uh, is an extension of a pharmaceutical unit in Punjab, and the other one is a, a fortification, food fortification unit in, uh, in Gujarat. So uh, really, um, if you talk about making India in the life science and health sector, uh, our companies are there. But I would like to tell you about another interesting um, collaboration that we have with DBT, and that is water for health. You are not surprised that if we talk about health in the Netherlands, water is another sector that we link to it, because we are a country that has been dealing with water for the last four or five hundred years. The idea is to come up with the Indo-Dutch Water Lab, which will be a one-of-a-kind, hands-on demonstration project that will help the development of innovative, scalable, and low-cost technologies to clean one of the dirtiest drains into the Yamuna in Delhi. So it will be really a lab almost on the drain. A consortium of experts from academia and industry from India and the Netherlands will come together for these projects to look at all aspects of the reuse of water in areas such as <laughs> agriculture, sanitation, and healthcare. This is an ideal example of combining the Indian low-cost innovation that I was talking about with the Dutch multidisciplinary approach to find solutions uh, for our common uh, challenges. Because that is the nice thing about this kind of projects, this water health lab, that the best of India and the best of the Netherlands working together to find solutions for our common problems, because our problems are the same. Another very interesting one uh, is the collaboration with DBT, um, um, with Bipco, here, the company in, uh, I think it's in Uttar, Uttar Pradesh, uh, and Intrafac in the Netherlands. Intrafac is a non-profit uh, governmental institution for development of innovation in uh, vaccines. For the development of, uh, and manufacturing of vaccines against measles rubella in India, and there also the transfer of, of technology is a very important aspect. This collaboration has a strong fo focus on training people here in India, thereby supporting to build skills of the workforce. So skill in India is a part uh, of uh, Mr. Modi's uh, priorities. Uh, 
There are several other collaborations with DBT, so, such as the Erasmus University in Rotterdam, with AIMS Neural Cohort Study, which has been going on now for the last uh, year, I think, where, again, there is a strong emphasis on training and skill building. So it's a very uh, strong uh, collaboration between the two. Um, this Neural Cohort Study is one of them, but they signed a memorandum of understanding, University of Rotterdam, with AIMS, to, uh, to expand their cooperation in other sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand that building such partnerships, such as this, demand learning experience and bridging cultural and trust gaps. Partnerships with local enterprise for technology penetration and implementation are not just beneficial and essential for business development, but for our society as a whole. Challenges posed by variable geometrics of SMEs in both countries need innovative solutions to long-term relationships, including consortium approaches, where you have more companies that are covering uh, all the subsectors. Um, so, where all stakeholders need to come uh, together from government, industry, and the academia. Like we said, this triangle uh, approach of government, uh, the knowledge sector, and industry. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I conclude with saying that this unique collaboration that we have with India was only made possible because of Vijay Raghavan's dynamic leadership and the close ties uh, we enjoy and that I've experienced uh, over the three years that I'm here in, uh, Del in Delhi, this very strong ties that we have with DBT. We look forward to work together in many areas and many other areas uh, in the future, uh, and we are yet to explore and play an active role in India's growth industry. I would like to finish uh, with uh, two lines in Hindi. Main sashta hun ki, hamare deshon ke, fisvidalion ke, or kompion ke, sahe okse, kamyabi milegi. Thank you so much. to metal pieces. Indian currency has seen many changes. The earliest punch marked coins came from Gandhar. The East India Company at the turn of the 19th century also minted its own coins. The Indo-Greek coins come from a colony left behind by Alexander. They depict the golden rule of the Guptas with embossed human portraits and matrimonial alliances like Chandragupta Maurya's wedding with Seleucus I Niketa's daughter. step forward, may I request Dr. Uh, Andreas Muriani, uh, who is the science counselor of the Embassy of Sweden, to give uh, his views on the collaborations. Thank you. And uh, as my colleagues did, I want to start off by congratulating DBT to this celebration of 30 years. And I'm thinking about uh, all the good, uh, great scientists across India who have been empowered by uh, uh, grants and programs that DBT has, uh, you know, put forward. Uh, this is a, a huge uh, effort, and I think it's it's really worth celebrating. And uh, after five years in India with a good collaboration with DBT, I feel almost part of that story a little bit. I, I, I wanted to explain to you a little bit how a relatively small country in Europe, Sweden. Uh, 
uh, has collaborated with uh, India and give a few examples of that, just to give you a picture of that. And then finally, I also wanted to answer uh, the question we were asked a little bit to reflect on, on, the, on the national missions and programs that are, this government is, is uh, uh, conducting. So Sweden, that has only 10 million inhabitants, uh, is a small country, but I think we still have a lot of uh, you know, things to contribute to, to this great nation. And I think our collaboration, although be it small, can, can have a catalytic effect. That, that is my hope, anyway. So our two countries signed a memorandum of understanding uh, on science and technology in 2005, so more than 10 years ago. And in Sweden, the Swedish innovation agency, Vinova, was assigned to lead the operation, uh, the, the you know, conduction of this uh, research and innovation collaboration uh, between Swedish and Indian researchers. And on the Indian side, as with all uh, bilateral collaborations, uh, DST is the nodal organization, but uh, Vinova and uh, uh, two other Swedish research funding organizations have collaborated with both DST and DBT uh, over these years to develop joint calls in a wide range of subject areas. Uh, we, we have regular joint commissions uh, that meet, and uh, uh, after the first meeting, which took place 2007, a total five calls for proposals have been announced with the different, between the different agencies. The first call was announced jointly by Vinova and DBT and dealt with the diagnosis, understanding, and treatment of tuberculosis. Um, and together we funded three, uh, four three-year projects which uh, have been successfully completed. Uh, Vinova and DBT had a second call in uh, 2013 uh, in a wider health area encompassing disease prevention, treatments, medical diagnostics, medical devices, and antimicrobial resistance. And uh, eight projects uh, have been funded and are still running. And so far from this collaboration with DBT, more than 25 publications in international journals have emerged. Uh, but I also want to give a specific example to show that it's not only journal articles that are coming out. Uh, and I was fortunate to, to be able to visit one of the uh, collaboration uh, projects uh, in November last year. And I was able to then get the story directly from the PI in charge, uh, which is uh, Dr. Virendar uh, Sangwan. He's the director of the Center for Ocular Regenerational Research at LV Prasad Eye Institute in Hyderabad. Uh, in, he is collaborating with uh, Dr. May Griffiths of Linköping University in Sweden in a jointly Venova DBT funded uh, uh, research uh, project. And their research aims to develop a synthetic cornea to eliminate the dependence of donated cornea. When such laboratory created corneas would or will become a reality, they, they will offer a potential solution for treatment and rehabilitation of corneal blind individual who depend on lifelong immunosuppressants. India needs an estimated 2 lakh or 200,000 corneas every year, but it only gets 30 to 40,000 through eye banking. In Sweden, estimates suggest that anywhere between 15 and 20 percent of patients needing corneas do not get translated. Uh, owing to the shortage of, of donations. So through this research project, in the next three years, the team expects to develop implants for use for corneal transplantations that would eliminate or at least supplement the need for donor tissue. The Indo-Swedish research essentially will uh, be aimed at developing a regenerative prosthesis or an implant which would be a mix of biosynthetic cornea and limbal epithelial stem cells that can be implanted in patients without any complications like rejections. I think this is great science and uh, will have enormous benefit to people in India, in Sweden, and anywhere else, because this is, of course, a technique that can be employed everywhere. So 
for this session, we were requested to reflect on international collaboration in the relation to the National Biotechnology Development Strategy and other national missions that India prioritizes. And when I uh, look through the uh, document, I notice that the Swedish flag is there on page 35. Uh, and of course, uh, we are obliged to be a partner with DBT and India in the ways where we can make a difference. Uh, uh, Vinova and DBT are already discussing the next call for proposals, uh, but I think uh, we can also find other uh, models for collaboration. Uh, the Swedish, uh, the Nobel Foundation in Sweden wants to work with DBT and other science agencies in India to set up outreach activities involving Nobel laureates which could be helpful to popularize science in wider circles and encourage those who are already in the science stream to continue <coughs> their good work. Um, and perhaps we can also find ways to help our startup companies to work with each other. I was here uh, yesterday afternoon listening to the session on uh, entrepreneurship and that was truly uh, you know, energizing because there are so many good uh, ideas and uh, I'm happy to see that there are many good companies in the life science and biotech area springing up and I, I would really uh, love to see more collaboration on that front with the Swedish startup uh, with the Swedish startup scene. When it comes to Make in India, I'm happy to say that we're expecting a huge delegation consisting of government officials, agencies, and private industry led by the Swedish Prime Minister to visit Make in India Week in Mumbai next weekend, on next Saturday. And this signif signifies uh, the importance that Sweden sees in collaboration with India. Thank you. Uh, I would like to introduce Mr. Doug Morris, who is the Deputy Minister Counselor for Economic, Environment, Science and Technology Affairs of the US Embassy in India. Mr. Doug Morris, uh, it is a privilege to have you, MSS, being in East Asia, the Pacific and in Washington. Welcome, Mr. Morris. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak uh, to you. I, uh, I'd like to thank uh, good Secretary uh, Vijay Raghavan for the invitation. I would say that in this space of biotechnology, uh, the work that the U.S. and India have been doing for the past 15 years um, through the Indo-U.S. Science and Technology Forum, or the IUSSTF, uh, has just been, well, frankly, quite phenomenal. Um, you know, whether it's the topic of biomaterials for healthcare, cell-based tissue engineering, including stem cell use, uh, cell-targeted diagnostics and therapeutics using nanomaterials, nanomedical and cellular engineering or nanomedicine. The U.S. and India have actively and successfully collaborated on joint research to further science and engineering technology in this field. IUSSTF has funded virtual resource centers between partner institutions in the U.S. and India, allowing researchers to collaborate on chosen themes for a number of years, and the research has been supported by grants for research, equipment, and for travel. Um, then there is the field of innovation and technology commercialization, which some folks have talked about already. The U.S.-India Science and Technology Endowment Fund, or USASTEF, has been in existence for um, around six years, um, has thus far funded uh, 20 or so different projects, of which a number relate to biotechnology. Uh, our projects are built on partnerships with the U.S. principal investigator, partnering with an Indian PI to execute the project. Um, one funded project that, that I'm particularly fond of uh, has identified microbial ecosystems in India which dwell in the plant uh, root systems, uh, the root soil complex, and impart drought resistance to crops like rice. Um, in addition, they reduce water consumption and allow uh, the various plants to tolerate higher temperatures. Um, this project and many others are in various stages of commercialization right now. There is an effort uh, that used to be called, and somebody spoke about it in an earlier uh, presentation, the Stanford India Biodesign Program, uh, but which has now evolved into the School of International Biodesign, which was initially conceived as a partnership between DBT, IIT, Delhi, AIIMS, uh, Stanford, and uh, IUSSTF 
to train the next generation of medical technology innovators and to create an ecosystem of frugal, as we said before, medical innovations. This was the perfect meeting of the Indian spirit of entrepreneurship with the innovative culture of Silicon Valley. The technology innovations and commercializations of come out of this program will continue to have life-changing impacts for millions of people uh, over the years to come. The Department of Biotechnology in cooperation with the University of Wisconsin and IUSSTF uh, sponsors the Corana program for scholars, uh, named after the Nobel Prize winning Professor Harkobin Corana, who did pri pioneering work while at Wisconsin. Um, this. Uh, the program is a place where the best and brightest young students from India spend six to eight weeks during the summer with researchers in various universities in the U.S., learning about lab techniques, working shoulder to shoulder with American students to facilitate joint clean energy research and development. Under this initiative, scientists, technologists, and engineers from both countries are working in areas of solar energy. I've also continued to organize, and I can't stress this enough, uh, animal biotech workshops which seek to raise awareness among regulators and policymakers both about science-based biotechnology regulator, regulatory systems um, in India, the U.S., and international authorities and other international authorities. And uh, as was mentioned uh, earlier, the U.S. National Institutes of Health has long-standing and productive collaboration with the Department of Biotechnology. Um, while I, I missed out on the Menzerum story, uh, I can talk more broadly uh, about uh, some of the issues that they've, they've actually achieved. Uh, under the Bilateral Vaccine Action Program, the VAP, uh, which held uh, you know, meetings, uh, I guess it was two weeks ago as well, which I attended, the NIH's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases provided support for development of uh, the indigenous vaccine uh, for rotavirus, uh, which is now being marketed here. Um, as a truly monumental achievement and one that uh, really can't be touted enough for the benefits uh, for child welfare and, uh, and the impacts on families. Uh, further research, of course, is underway for vaccines on tuberculosis, dengue, and chikungunya. The NIH's National Eye Institute supports collaborative research and vision on including diabetic retinopathy, the genetics of ophthalmo ophthalmic disease and ocular inflama inflammation. The NIH's National Institute of Biomedical Imaging and Bioengineering supports the development of innovative yet low-cost medical devices. A wheelchair developed jointly by scientists at the University of Pittsburgh in the U.S. and the Indian Spinal Injury Center was recently dedicated uh, to the nation by the Honorable Ministry of, Minister of Science and Technology. Uh, in conclusion, um, I would say that we, have, of course, encourage continued work uh, on these channels of cooperation. Um, on these and others, we need to uh, deepen and strengthen and spend the time uh, and money, resources, and human capital um, so that even more people can benefit from the cooperation uh, between the U.S. and India uh, in biotechnology field. So thank you very much. <laughs>